गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस क्लास आई बी डिस्कसिंग पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म आई बी गिविंग यू अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू दिस मूवमेंट होप यू नो यू हैव टू स्टडी थ्री टेक्स्ट अंडर दिस मूवमेंट वन इज बांग इज लव इन दी एयर द अदर वन इज अ फिल्म अखीरा एंड देन दर इज अ नोवेल वाइट टीथ बाई सेडी स्मिथ सो इन दिस क्लास आई बी गिविंग यू अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू द मूवमेंट पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म so let us begin before directly moving into post modernism i would like to introduce some of these graffitis which appeared in fort kochi around 2018 during binali so these are known as graffitis what are graffitis graffitis are actually paintings made on walls so this graffiti is made by an anonymous person who always writes guess who under these paintings so this is actually a stencil art which came in and around fort kochi during 2018 so what do you see in these stencil arts you see all those popular figures out there in one picture there is this karl marx and engels in the other one it is mona lisa and the other one the third one of course you are all familiar with those comical figures it is none other than kutusen and dagni and what do you see here it is actually a mash up of popular figures with indian every man or every woman as you see in these pictures you have this kfc person colonel sanders and the other one is che guevara and the last one it is prem nasir and can you imagine colonel sanders making dosha che guevara as a trade union laborer and prem nasir as james bond here what you see is actually one of the major characteristics of post modernism it is the playful juxtaposition of something contradictory which you will never imagine will come together so i thought i will introduce something light to you before coming to this a uh, heavy subject post modernism so let us begin with post modernism post modernism from the word itself you know that it is a period that develop toward the end of the 20th century and just as the name implies it is the period that comes after modern period but these are not easily separated into discrete units with specific dates you can't find a specific date for the beginning of post modernism post modernism you should understand post modernism came about as a reaction to the established modernist era which in itself you must understand modernism itself was the outgrowth of the enlightenment project of the 19th century so what sets you must understand the key point to understand here is what sets post modernism apart from its predecessor is actually the reaction of its practitioners of all those post modernist writers to the rational scientific and historical aspects of the modern age and these post modernist mainly took the guise of being self conscious experimental and ironic so these are some of the major characteristics you can point to post modernism so as i said earlier there is no exact date for the establishment of post modernism 
but it may be said to have begun in the post world war 2 era roughly during 1950s and it took full flight in the 1960s in the face of all those global social and political unrest and in 1968 it reached its zenith its peak with this intense student protest happening in united states and france and then there was this war happening in algeria for independence and then there was soviet invasion happening in czechoslovakia so here we see the peak of postmodernism so as i said earlier it is an outgrowth of modernism just like modernism was an outgrowth of the earlier enlightenment project and in the in the years following world war 2 there was this new impetus in the art and philosophy which resulted in postmodernism but you should understand that you can't treat postmodernism as a unified movement it is not a coherent movement with all those definitive characteristics it completely lack all those definitive characteristics you can't pin point certain characteristics and say that these are the characteristics of postmodernism it can be only understood as a set of styles and attitudes which is completely different or which came as a reaction against modernism only you can say that it is a set of styles or attitudes which arose out of a reaction against modernism now i briefly tell you about the socio historical background of postmodernism as i said earlier there was this new impetus in art and philosophy after world war 2 which resulted in postmodernism and in this early 20th century all those authors composers architects and other intellectuals rebelled against the strictures of older forms and ways of doing things these people were reluctant to fall into the traps of conventionalization we have architects creating more functionally oriented buildings composers started creating different methods of organizing musical sounds to create music and authors writers felt similarly constricted and they also started reacting against old styles and formats of poetry and fiction so here we see writers who were moving away from this conventionalization as you know modern movement were slowly becoming a canon during that time and gradually becoming the old guard so here these postmodern writers these architects composers etc they wanted to make something different which is more invigorating and we have these major critics like derrida and foucault who had their major works coming in 1960s and they challenged the stability of meaning and structures through their works and this is one of the major characteristics of postmodernism that is the loss of faith in grand narratives like progress science etc one of the postmodernist proponents loitard defined postmodernism as incredulity towards grand narratives incredulity towards grand narratives by this he means that what are these grand narratives grand narratives 
one grand narrative is something like the belief the idea that a revolution was inevitable and that would bring some kind of beneficial social change and another grand narrative was something like enlightenment ideal that progress in social terms would be achieved only through technological advancement so these are the grand narratives the and the credibility of these grand narratives were actually destroyed by world war 2 which revealed the hollowness of both these grand narratives there was a revolution but it gave rise to stalinism there was a enlightenment but it gave rise to nazism as you know so here in this century people started losing their faith in grand narratives and we see along with that we see that there is this thought coming up that all these localized political interventions like feminism and environmentalism identity politics would replace mass progressive movements also in 1950s and 60s we see major changes happening 1960s we saw the emergence of multiple media the advent of tv cinema coming in new art forms so we see a new approach we also see a new approach to popular culture arts among those artists who made significant impact on their art form we have beatles jimi hendrix and the rolling stones so these rock groups started experimenting with new sounds combination of entertaining lyrics and lyrics with some political or social implications their entertainment their music was not only there to entertain but it had social and political themes as well you have already studied the works of bob dylan so here we see that there is a major shift when you take the case of films the role of the film changed from a medium of pure entertainment to a medium with social or political emphasis and at the same time the advent of tv television was emerging from the shadows of being radio with pictures it was initially known as a radio with pictures now it was gradually emerging out of that shadow becoming an important medium of its own we have in 1950s the introduction of situational comedy is happening in tv but later in 1960s they were giving way to less formal programs and moving into the beginning of post modern television programs one such program is all in the family and laugh in so here what you see is that there is a blurring of the lines between serious and non serious earlier there was this exclusive domain of serious writing but here in this era we see that there is this blurring of the lines a mixture of serious and non serious coming up and along with that the consumer culture was its at its peak and we also see the artist reaction towards it in 1960s the whole world was changing actually there was this emergence and assertion of pluralism emergence and assertion of multiple identities we see the mixing of various cultures and people happening which actually replaced the earlier monocultural nature 
the dominant white male perspectives started getting questioned. In feminism, racist studies and pure studies, what you see is all those multiple perspectives emerging. And diversity and pluralism was also visible in terms of content and styles. And when you come to text, we see that the replacement, what you see is a replacement of a writer-centric world. Till then, a writer or artist was the sender of creativity. We have now the famous concept introduced by Roland Barthes. It is known as death of the author, which means, which means that the author has no sovereignty, no power over his own words once it is out there. Now, the power rests on the readers who interpret them. So, this is what Roland Barthes says. The birth of the reader must be at the cost of the death of the author. Now, we shall look at the difference between modernism of 20s and 30s and postmodernism. As you know, postmodernism, as I said earlier, is an outgrowth of modernism. So, if you compare and contrast it with modernism, you will be able to understand postmodernism in a better light. So, I have given modernism at this side and postmodernism at the other side. So, first of all, about the philosophical paradigm of modernism. The modernist philosophical paradigm can be expressed as the following. It is the search for the truth. But in the case of postmodernism, it is like there is no identifiable truth. And modernist writers mainly felt tragic as they perceived the meaninglessness of life. Postmodernism also understands the meaninglessness of life, but they take it as a fact. They don't feel tragic like modernist writers. They don't feel tragic and at the same time, they were actually celebrating it. They accepted it, they embraced it and they celebrated the meaninglessness of life or the fragmentation. And modernists believed that artist is not the preserver of the culture. Rather, for them, the artist is the creator of culture. And the art of the modernist is experimental, innovative and formally complex. While in the case of postmodernism, artist does not believe that art or artist occupies a special place apart from the rest of the society. As I said earlier, the concept of death of the author or death of the artist. Here, art is a process, a performance, a production using combinations of media. Art is a recycling of culture authenticated by audience. There are no agreed upon standards. While modernist is formally complex, it is innovative and experimental. Here, there are no agreed upon standards. For the modernist writers, art is a unique object, a finished work, which is authenticated by the artist. For example, the idea that the photograph never lies. But in the case of postmodernism, with all those digital imaging, photos and videos, which can be altered completely or which can be recreated completely, it leaves the question out there, what is reality? In modernism, writers are very conscious of the act of writing. 
they are very conscious of the act of writing and try to leave what they try is to leave a permanent result in the reader's mind with their product and during that time you know the novel is the dominant form of fiction writing and in that work in that novel it is the author who determines the meaning of the novel for the reader while in the case of postmodernism postmodern writers are very much aware that language is not as permanent as the modernists believed and therefore their product is not a stable one and the other one in modernist perspective art is created to shock the audience the cubism of picasso and novels of james joyce are actually examples of these shocking creations and once art is completed it is a stable work of art but in the case of postmodernism art is less shocking and more an incomplete artifact of the artist for example you have performance art as you see in this picture so in performance art you see people live in a store window or in a glass walled house revealing their everyday life to a passing public so here each time art is different and it is recreated by even participants now we will discuss some of the major styles visible in post modernist works so these are some of the important styles you see in post modernist works the first one being schizophrenia schizophrenia as you know it is actually a medical condition you know that it is something like a person with schizophrenia will completely lose his touch with reality so here too it is more or less in the same lines and schizophrenia is 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 an important aspect of post modernism in literature and entertainment and here it is the relaxation of strict timeline sometimes it is called discontinuous time and here author a post modernist writer usually construct a sequence of events that have no time relationships to each other so this is a kind of temporal disruption and it is termed as schizophrenia by frederick jameson frederick jameson is one of the major post modern critic now we move to the next style that is the use of irony irony is a specialized use of language in which you know that irony is actually something which is opposite of the literal meaning which is intended and its former use often had the intent to provoke a change in behavior from those who were the object of the irony but in the case of post modernism a post modernist writer use this technique to poke fun at the object of the irony without the intention of making a social change while in the case in the former use it was used to make a social change and it had a serious quality the next style adopted by post modern writer it is authorial intrusion and the element of metafiction occasionally in these works an author will speak directly to the audience or to a character in the text in the course of a work which is not the usual method in a novel you see always the author will be absent but in these post modernist works author will be very much present there he will be speaking directly to the audience or to a character not as a character in the tale but as the writer himself so here the attention is directed to the process of fictive 
composition. So that is known as a metafiction. It is actually a fiction within a fiction. Now the other quality is, the other style is self-reflexivity. Many literary works make comments about the works themselves, reflecting on the writing or the meaning of the work. So these works are said to be self-conscious. In some instances, these postmodernist works will make a comment about itself in a critical way, making a self-reflexive comment on the whole process of writing, reading or understanding literature. And then you have another style, it is collage. This style is characterized by an often random association of dissimilar objects without any intentional connection between them or without a specified purpose for these associations. And you also see the elements of intertextuality as you see in these pictures. So as you know, it is the picture of Napalm Girl. This is one of the iconic images of the Vietnam War. Here you see the Napalm Girl taken to another context, walking along with comic figures there. So that is the element of intertextuality happening. Every work refers to another work or image and it creates new meaning. So here I end my lecture. Hope you understood. So you can even go back to the images we saw in the first slides and now we, you will be able to connect more with those images, I hope. So thank you girls. Have a nice day.